Hi, I'm Peter Rennert Ariev, and I'm on the Loyola Smart PD design team, and I'd like to show you the steps that you're going to follow in order to construct the rubric for your assessment task. What you'll need to do is first locate the template for that rubric that's located in the Task Builder folder. So what you'll do is click on Task Builder Online, and then click on Scoring. That link appears here in the middle top of your screen. The template that we recommend that you start with is located under Loyola Smart PD Rubrics here at the top of the screen, and I'm clicking on that now. And there you'll see a template for a rubric that the rubric that you can use for your assessment task. You'll see that there's space for you to write the scores that students will achieve, as well as a description of their performances that correspond to each score. In order to edit your rubric, all you need to do is scroll to the bottom of the screen and click on Submit to the Task Builder Design page, which I'm doing right now. Then that same template will appear as a task that you can edit however you want. You can delete text and add text, and you can um, customize your rubric any way that you want to. Now, what I've done is I've come up with an example in order to show you what, you what a rubric, what a sample rubric might look like. So what you're seeing in front of you is an already completed uh, draft. In this case, the example is for a comparison and contrast essay. And the two main attributes or characteristics that I want to assess are how well students elaborate on their ideas and how sophisticated is their use of language. So you'll see that at a level four, or in this case, the highest level, students, the description is that students elaborate their ideas with facts, details, or examples, and they, they use all information for their comparison and contrast essay. And for use of language, the second attribute, they, students demonstrate excellent sentence and vocabulary variety, and includes very, the students include very few mechanical errors. So this is the highest, most sophisticated level of performance for uh, students on the comparison and contrast essay. You can see as I scroll down the rubric, a level three includes the same two attributes, but at a slightly less proficient level of performance. So, so the description there would be, students elaborate most ideas with facts, details, um, and examples. I'm sorry that I'm going to correct this, and examples. They use most information for comparison and contrast. And their use of language, they demonstrate adequate sentence and vocabulary variety, but they still include very few mechanical errors. So you can see the performance here is still strong, but um, less exemplary than it is at a level four. And then along the same lines at a level two, the same two attributes are used, elaboration and use of language, but here the level of proficiency is, is um, much less. Students do not elaborate all ideas, and they do not use enough details for comparison and contrast. And their use of language, they demonstrate repetitive use of sentence structure and vocabulary and include many mechanical errors. And then the lowest level, a level one, is th that um, reflects a level of performance whereby students do not provide facts or examples to support a comparison and contrast essay. And their use of language is that they demonstrate poor use of language, and that which generates confusion, includes many mecha mechanical errors. So as I scroll back up here to a level four, the key to a rubric is that you're very clear what attributes it is that you're assessing, and you um, consistently reflect those attributes throughout your, your rubric, and that you're very clear how each level of performance is different. You might not have a level four and a level three. You might call it, um, you might give it a grade, an A or a B, for example. Um, that will depend, on, depend on, your, on exactly what system you're using to assess, but the key is to be very consistent throughout your rubric and very clear what exact what performances correspond to each level. When you're finished editing your rubric and you're ready to uh, save it and share it with your coach, what you'll do is go into your task builder tools section here in the top right of your screen. First, you want to be sure to save your, your template by clicking on save. Now it's saved, and then what you can do is clone it. I'm clicking on that now. By cloning it, you, can, you allow yourself to create a copy for yourself, which will appear in your task folder, as well as you can create a clone for any of your colleagues, which will place your template, your draft, in 
your colleagues task folder so that they can open it and review it and make comments for you. So in this case, I want to clone to my own task folder, which I'm doing now. I want to clone to Nick Hobar, one of my colleagues, which I'm doing now by clicking on that box. My task title is Portfolio Draft Clone. It automatically adds the word clone to this title when I'm um, attempting to create a clone, and I'm going to, to keep that title. And then I'm all set. I just click on Clone at the bottom of the screen right here. And now my task has been successfully cloned to all the selected recipients, and I'm ready to engage in some uh, in discussion and receive feedback on the task, task that I've created. I hope this helps indicate how you're going to go about constructing your, your um, rubric and how you're going to go about saving it 